Welcome to the Sage Thought Leadership Podcast, building experiences that connect, remove friction, and deliver insights. Well, hi, everyone, and welcome to our podcast. I'm Ed Kless, and with me today is Keegan Fonte. Keegan is the volunteer host of the Artificial Intelligence and Machine Learning Brown Bag Meetup at Sage and is a champion for the continuous innovation community. The AI Brown Bag is a once a month meetup for folks interested in machine learning and artificial intelligence. Recently, for example, they had a speaker come and talk about vendor matching and how we are using machine learning in general ledger to match across correct vendors. In his work life, Keegan is a marketing and product professional with 14 years of marketing experience in the U.S. across technology, car rentals, food and retail, and now SaaS with Sage. Welcome to the Sage Thought Leadership Podcast, Keegan Fonte. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ed. Thanks for having me. Well, first off, Keegan, why do you do what you do? Um, You know, that's a really fun question, Ed, because um, I love to learn. And what really drives me is also helping people. And um, I really find that being the volunteer host of AI and machine learning helps me combine both of those passions. Um, not only learning about something new, um, I definitely don't have any technical knowledge aside from what I've gained as a volunteer here for the AI um, and ML brown bag. Um, but I also love then taking that knowledge and information and sharing it back to people so they can use it in their everyday lives. Well, tell me more about this, this uh, AI brown bag meetup. Yeah. Um, what's really fun is, so the idea here is that, you know, we want folks to talk about what they know or, um, you know, what is going on in and around Sage around artificial intelligence and machine learning. And Sage happens to be doing a lot of it. But we also have folks come and talk about, you know, how does that intersect with their roles? And so what's pretty cool is the idea is that, you know, you don't have to be technical you don't have to understand um, statistical methods, although we do sometimes present on that, but we would like everyone and anyone to come and learn about artificial intelligence, about machine learning. Um, we often have data scientists come and talk about it, but we also bring folks in from other work streams around Sage to talk about how AI or machine learning is intersecting with their roles. Um, and we, we really love and, and encourage anyone and everyone to come who um, you know, might generally be interested to come learn something, um, you come ask questions, um, you know, and everyone's welcome. So tell me a little bit more about something that in the, in the past, maybe a few months that you've picked up from this. Yeah. So what's been really fun and I'm, I'm sure, uh, folks who are listening in, um, can probably relate because we've got some AI chatbots that are in the lexicon of, I think not only most of America right now, but probably around the world. Um, and chat GPT is the one that, you know, is the chatbot that's top of mind right now. So what, what's really fun about that is how much it can do and how powerful it is, um, and also the implications of that. Um, and then what you know, what's been really interesting and things that we've um, we've been talking around about in and around the AI brown bag group is, um, you know, what spawned from ChatGPT and all these major uh, technology companies out there, Microsoft, for example, um, or even uh, folks in their um, you know in their back offices and some smaller smaller organizations. <clears throat> who are now creating an alternative to chat GPT or creating um, for the education community, for example, um, you know, a way to detect if something has been created by an artificial intelligence machine or, or a machine learning um, algorithm. So it's been really fun and really interesting to uh, kind of see the different conversations that are spurring from um, chat GPT and, and its launch in the last couple of months. And I was just listening to a, an interview with Mark Andreessen, who was talking about this, and he said, well, ChatGPT is really just a more sophisticated auto type, auto correct. And if you think about it, you know, when you start typing in your email and it suggests the next couple of words for you, it's just that taken to the nth degree. Um, but one of the things I'd be curious is, is in your conversations. Yeah, I, I do think that the, it's certainly going to affect the education community um, mm -hmm. around people who have to write stuff. But yes, it can detect it. But what if somebody uses it as the, the as as the launching point for something that they write? Where's the where do you think the 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 point is between is it yours or is it Chat GPT's? <laughs> yeah, you know what's so interesting is. Um, I don't know. And I think that's still, I don't think that's defined. And that's, so that's really interesting, Ed, because, you know, we've got ghost authors out there writing books, um, you know, for uh, famous people who then put their name on the cover. So, you know, is this, you know, in that similar situation and like at, at some point, or we, maybe we might see chat GPT monetize the, the, 
you know, the, the language that's written by the app. It's, it's going to be really interesting. It's definitely changing the game. Yeah. Um, I mean, sometimes those, like, those ghost authors don't even get a, you know, a whiff. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. That's right. Yeah. You knew, would never even know. <laughs> yeah. So, but what, what are some of the things that as, as it applies, you mentioned that you had talked about um, general ledger and matching to, to vendors. What, what was that about? To explore that for me. Yes. <laughs> Excuse me. So we've had a, um, the Mercury group here at Sage has been working on some recent projects and, and that's a, just a recent uh, talk that was given by um, Carl's Panades Guinart, uh, data scientist here at Sage, um, and he talked about the different methods, the fallback and feedback methods that that we are using, um, you know, to match vendors to, um, you know, so uh, give an example is when customers are, um, you know, looking on an invoice and they want to have the correct vendor matched to the correct um, correct charge, um, and it it seems like it, it would be something that would be pretty simple, but it re- does require. Um, you know, some algorithms in the background to make sure that the name is correct. I mean, even some small changes in in uh, in syntax can really have a big impact on whether or not the right, um, you know, the right vendors get matched to the right invoice charges and the right tickets. So it's it's been really interesting. We've got some um, future speakers coming up who are going to do the round two version of that. So part two is coming up on February 14th. Interesting. I, the, one, one thing that I have noticed in playing with Chat GPT myself is that when it when it it gets it wrong, it gets it way wrong. It it, it really goes <laughs> yeah yeah it really it goes, goes far sideways. <laughs> you know, what's really um, for me too, Ed. What's really interesting about Chat GPT is not only the implications. I talked a little bit about the implications in education, but actually, there's a there's a lot of implications for marketing as well. And I've seen some big name agencies, marketing agencies, and this is just the marketing nerd in me, um, who have come out to say that they're going to use chat GPT to write their blog content, um, or they're going to use chat GPT to write their um, articles, their posts, their social media content. Um, And it'll be really interesting. At some point, I think we're, and I don't, I mean, we're definitely not there yet. This is very new. And as we start to see more artificial intelligence or chat bots, you know, writing content, are we going to find original content or is it going to be continue to see like a collation of the same content that's out there? And I think we're going to see at some point, we're going to see sort of this homogeneous um, uh, leveling out of content that's available. And, and to your point, it, when it's wrong, it's really wrong, you know, so um, it, it's uh, there's only so much that machine learning can do and artificial intelligence can do. So. And Keegan, we have an exit question that we ask all of our guests, and that is, who is a hero of yours and why are they a hero? Yeah, so I think um, that's a. I love this question, and um, it's my parents are definitely my heroes. Um, my dad, my stepmom, my mom, um, my stepdad. Um, they, they're my heroes because I, as I've become a parent, I'm um, I've got a five year old and a one and a half year old, two little girls. Um, they're great. They're rambunctious. They couldn't be more different. Um, I realized that um, my parents, being the parents of six kids uh, between both families it's a lot of work and a lot of effort. And I had a lot of activities and sports growing up and like, and so did all my siblings. Um, and my parents put in the time and effort to do that. And, um, you know, now looking back, I'm really grateful. And, uh, and they're definitely have in, in, in the last five and a half years realized, um, actually they are my, my parents, um, are my heroes because of, uh, how, how much hard work and effort they put into raising us. And lastly, Keegan, how can somebody contact you? Yeah, so I think the great uh, great way is either an MS Teams, um, you know, Keegan K E E G A N Fonte F O N T E, um, or my email, which is uh, Keegan dot Fonte at Sage dot com. All right, my Sage colleague Keegan Fonte, thanks so much for being a guest on the Sage Thought Leadership Podcast. Thank you so much, Ed. Thanks for having me. Review and subscribe by searching your podcast player of choice for Sage Thought Leadership Podcast.